Many of the problems we've talked about in previous modules come up in discrete choice analysis too. So for example, suppose we work for the local city government and we want to reduce bus service. But what's the effect of reducing bus service on the overall bus demand, on the market share of buses, the percentage of people who take the bus? Well, what exactly does it mean to reduce bus service? One interpretation is that it increases the total travel time by bus because if fewer buses are coming to the bus stop, then you're going to have to wait longer once you get there. So what we really want to know is what's the effect of increasing the total travel time of buses on the market share for buses. Well, how are we going to learn that? We're going to go to the data and we're going to use variation in the data in travel time to learn about people's preferences for travel time. So where does that variation come from? Well, some people live close to a bus station and some people live far from a bus station. So some people's total travel time for the bus is shorter than others. So in our data, we've got variation in travel time that we can use to learn about these preferences. But here's the problem. There could be an unobserved confounder that is correlated with, these, with people's travel time and also affects people's choices, how people rank their options. So if that exists, then we may incorrectly make some inference about people's preference for travel time, which really is not about travel time at all. It's about this unobserved confounder. So for example, suppose that the city also had a policy that subsidized people who lived far from the bus stop okay, to try to get them to use the bus more. Well, if that was the case and the subsidy increased as, the, as you live, uh, moved farther and farther away from the bus stop, then we might actually see in the data that total travel time doesn't seem to matter. And that's because the people who live farther and therefore have a larger total travel time are getting compensated for the fact that they live farther. So what we see from the data, if we don't observe this confounder and we don't include it in our analysis, is that travel time doesn't matter. And so therefore, we would conclude that if we reduced bus service and increased total travel time, the market share for buses would stay the same. But that would be wrong because of this confounder. So basically, unobserved confounders were a problem before and they're still a problem now. Even though we're making more assumptions about how people are uh, behaving, we still have to worry about whether we've included all the variables in our analysis that are relevant or not. Mm -hmm.